Yes, it's me again. <laughs> wow, that was awesome. Um, uh, what a great response. Learned so much. Uh, for me, um, if I could put it in a nutshell, uh, condense it down, I would say uh, those individuals who repent and turn unto Christ will have infinite joy and happiness, and those that don't will have infinite consequences. So anyway, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, I'm going to cover some more scriptures today that both tie into that and this other concept. So this, this other concept I have is I did a video on body for all, blood for many. Body for all, blood for many. Um, and I'm going to tie in a couple of those. Before I do that, I want to show this cool shirt that one of our fellow cows uh, printed up and sent me in this long sleeve uh, shirt and my wife a, a short sleeve t-shirt and then a young uh, one for for maybe a grandchild or something it's so cool I, I don't know if I can show you the back I'm still uh, unable to put weight on one of my legs but I don't know if that's visible or not but uh, so cool so if I have your information, I think. I can find your email. But the, the folks in California that did these shirts for us, if you could email me, I would really appreciate it. Um, I, I want to communicate. And perhaps some of you might want to purchase some of these from, from these good folks, and they should make a little bit of money off them. They're really well done and really nice. Thank you. Very heartfelt. Okay, so I'm going to talk a, a few scriptures here. Um, that show the condition of Christ's suffering um, both on the cross and in the garden, and particularly the, the condition of, of sin, okay? So let's go to Matthew 26, um, verse uh, 27 and 28. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This is interesting, folks. This is very interesting. Shed for many. Now, if you go to the Joseph Smith translation of that, if you go to the very back of your Bible, um, back past the Bible dictionary, you'll, you'll have uh, excerpts from the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible. And if you go to Moses or Matthew 26, 24, and 25, for this is in remembrance of my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for as many as shall believe on my name for the remission of sins. So isn't this interesting that we have the body, the, the resurrection is for all, but this blood is for many condition upon repentance. So then that gets into this idea of, of suffering. Did Christ suffer for the sins of everybody, regardless if they repent or not? Or did he suffer for those that, that repent? Now, um, here's another way to think of it. We, we learn in, in section 19 that if we don't repent, that we have to suffer just as Christ did for that, for, for that sin, right? At some point, it's pretty clear, right? So... If Christ suffered for all sins, no matter who committed them, then we have then we we have potential of having two sufferings: Christ suffering for all the sins, and then that individual who didn't repent suffering for that same sin. That doesn't make sense to me up here. One suffering for sin, for unrepented sin, or yeah, for sin. One suffering for sin. If we repent, Christ took care of it. If we didn't repent, we take care of it. And that repentance can happen on this side or the other side of the veil, depending on if we've had that opportunity, right? Um, so we don't wanna, we, I don't wanna get into that right now. But, but I think that's, that's pretty clear. Now, let's go to, there's, there's several scriptures of this conditional thing, but, but let's go to um, Isaiah 53. If we go to Isaiah 53, and this is, this is as well as in Mosiah, that's quoted exactly uh, I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same in Isaiah. Um, and this is Isaiah 53, 11. And he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge and, 
and shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Justify many, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay, and you can also go to Mark um, and, and get this, a real similar thing, for the sins of many, for the sins of many. Um, okay, so we've, we, we've talked about that. I want to try to get through these scriptures pretty fast here. So let's go to 2 Nephi uh, 2, 6 through 7. 2 Nephi 2, 6 through 7. Um, this, is, this is good. Um, okay. Wherefore redemption cometh in and through the holy Messiah, for he is full of grace and truth. Behold, he offereth himself a sacrifice for sin to answer the ends of the law unto all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. There's a condition on it. He answers the ends of the law unto all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And unto none else can the ends of the law be answered. Boom. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Let's, let's go to um, 2 Nephi 9. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, 2 Nephi 9. Um, and I don't want to read all of this, but, but really, it, all of it, it, it's basically 21 all the way through 27. But I, I want to um, try to condense this. Okay, wherefore, I'm going to start in verse 25. Wherefore, he has given a law... And where there is no law given, there is no punishment. And where there is no punishment, there is no condemnation. And where there is no condemnation, the mercies of the Holy One of Israel shall have claim upon them because of the atonement, uh, for they are delivered by the power of him. These are people that aren't held accountable. This is wonderful. What, what, a, what mercy and grace. For the atonement satisfy the demands of his justice upon all those who have not the law given. Okay, so I'm gonna... Skip down to verse 27. But woe unto him that has the law given, yea, that has all the commandments of God like unto us. So this is Nephi saying, like unto us. And he that transgresseth them and that wasteth the days of his probation, for awful is his state. So, I'm not the judge of who's had that opportunity, but Nephi said, like unto us, I'm gonna say like unto me, okay? Um, I'm not gonna have an excuse. I'm not gonna have an excuse, in my opinion, in my opinion, okay? So, so I'm looking forward to the redemption by believing in Christ, having his, him taking upon my sins that I've repented of, but can't make up, for, for it all, and I'm gonna put my burden on him by believing on him and turning to him and repenting, okay, daily, uh, always, right? Okay, so, so we've covered that. Let's go to Messiah um, 15. I think this is really a powerful one. Messiah 15, and I'm gonna read verses 11 and 12. Uh, Behold, I say unto you that whosoever has heard the words of the prophets, yea, all those holy prophets who have prophesied concerning the coming of the Lord. That's interesting. I say unto you that all those who have hearkened unto their words and believed that the Lord would redeem his people, his people. And let's see what the definition of his people. And have looked forward to the day for a remission of their sins. I say unto you that these are his seed. His people are his seed. Those that look to him to be redeemed by him. Or they um, 
um, or they are the heirs of the kingdom of God. For these are they whose sins he has borne. Now that's a key one. For these, his people, his seed, the ones that believe on him, for these are they whose sins he has borne. That's in, in, in verse uh, 12. Um, and I'm in Mosiah 15. These are they for whom he has died to redeem them from their transgressions. And now are they not his seed? This is, this is good stuff. Now I'm gonna skip to verse 26. I'm still in Mosiah 15. For behold, the, behold and fear and tremble before God for ye ought to, to fear and tremble, or you ought to tremble. For the Lord redeemeth none such that rebel against him and die in their sins. Yea, even all those who have perished in their sins ever since the world began that have willfully rebelled against God, that have known the commandments of God and would not keep them. These are they that have no part in the first resurrection. So God's their judge, not me. Um, I know that I've been, I know that I know, okay? Therefore ye ought to tremble, for salvation cometh to none such. Salvation cometh to none such, yea, neither can the Lord redeem such, for he cannot deny himself, for he cannot deny justice when it has its claim. Okay, excellent, really good there. Okay, um, let's go to Moses 7 just for, for, for fun. Moses chapter 7. Um, Moses chapter 7, verse 39. And, uh, and that which I have chosen hath pled before my face, wherefore he suffereth for their sins inasmuch as they will repent in the day that my chosen shall return unto me. And un until that day they shall be in torment. Okay? Um, <laughs> okay, it's good stuff. Now, if we go to um, section 138, there is so much in here. There is so much in section 138. You could read the whole thing, um, but I just want to uh, talk about one, uh, a couple of verses, 19 through 20. Let's look at those, 19 through 20. And he preached unto them the everlasting gospel, the doctrine of resurrection and redemption of mankind, the fall and from individual sin on condition of repentance. And from individual sins on condition of repentance. Okay? The doctrine of redemption of all mankind from the fall and from individual sin, condition of repentance. And unto the wicked he did not go, and among the ungodly, and the unrepentant, and the unrepentant, who had defiled themselves while in the flesh, his voice was not raised. Neither did the rebellious who rejected the testimonies of the warnings of the ancient prophets behold his presence, uh, nor looked upon his face. Okay, so, so there's a lot of things there um, that we could look at. So I hope these scriptures are helpful. Um, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse, as it were, but um, there, there's some wonderful things here. Um, right at the end of the Book of Mormon, um, and I'll probably end on this scripture here, um, we have um, Moroni chapter 10, the last, uh, toward, right towards the end. Um, Yea, come unto Christ and be perfected in him and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourself of all ungodliness, the love of God with, your, with, with all your heart um, and love God with all your heart, might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you. Then is his grace sufficient for you. That by his grace, ye may be perfect in Christ. And if, it, if it's by the grace of God, ye, shall, ye are perfect in Christ and ye can in no wise deny the power of God the power, remember? And again, if, if, verse 33, if ye by the grace of God are perf perfect in Christ and deny not his power, then are ye sanctified in Christ by the grace of God through the shedding, through the shedding, through the shedding of the blood of Christ, 
which is in the covenant of the Father unto the remission of your sins, that ye become holy without spot. So, friends, I love you all. And, and I'm telling you, this was a great conversation. Um, me personally, I think there are uh, a, a, a conditions with the, with the, with the suffering. Um, and, and really look at the sacrament prayers for the, for the bread and then for the water or the wine. Look at the difference. Really dissect it. And there's evidence in there as well. Of, of body for all and blood for many. Um, God bless you all. I hope this is helpful. I hope um, that, that we can uh, continue to learn together. I love you all. The, uh, uh, you know, I know I bring up some things that, that cause a little bit of heartache. Look, I'm not looking to condemn anybody. It's not my job. I'm just reading the scriptures and, and seeing that there are, um, um, that the judgment day will come, um, that, that I'll be accountable. Um, I, I'm not, I know some people accuse me of, of maybe being uh, worried about condemning others and looking. I, that's not my nature. I, I, I'm not doing that. When I'm reading the scriptures, I'm pointing, I'm pointing right here. I'm pointing right here to me. Um, I was kind of taken back thinking that I've given that impression that I, I was pointing my finger at somebody else. Um, so I apologize for that. That was not meant. Um, so mm, these scriptures are great. Some people, uh, there was a, a suggestion that I use, uh, that I start with a word of prayer in my, in my videos. And I said, I, I feel a little uncomfortable doing that because I, I'm not doing this with the authority of anybody. Um, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And sometimes when we invoke a prayer, we're, we're like validating um, that, that we are connected and, uh, and, and that I have some authority. So I, I just want this to be a chat. Um, the other thing is, is that I, I very seldom bear my testimony um, in this setting um, because I don't want people to think that my opinion uh, that's my thing, right? I've, I've built my YouTube channel on my opinion that I don't want them to think that, that my opinion is, is in the name of Christ. I reserve that for very few things <laughs> and, 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 and in sacred times um, when, when I would close in the name of Christ. Now, that's not to say that I don't believe these things and, and, and feel strong about them, but I just don't feel this is the format to do that. But I appreciate it. I appreciate the suggestion. But maybe you can understand where I'm coming from. Why I don't. Why I don't do that. Um, I think I've said it all. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye.